Angiogenesis is the physiological process through which new blood vessels form from pre-existing vessels. Today, we mainly focus on the following five aspects. Angiogenesis is the growth of blood vessels from the existing vasculature. It occurs throughout life in both health and disease, beginning in utero and continuing on through old age. Hemangioblasts differentiate from mesodermal stem cells and give rise to hematopoietic stem cells and angioblasts. Angioblasts are a cell type with potency to differentiate into endothelial cells but have not yet acquired all characteristic markers of endothelial cells. Vasculogenesis is the de novo formation of blood vessels from angioblasts. It occurs in the extraembryonic and intraembryonic tissues of embryos. The formation of new blood vessels provides a route for oxygen and nutrient delivery, as well as a conduit for components of the inflammatory response during the healing of wounds. Proangiogenic treatments have shown remarkable promise in the healing of wounds in pathological conditions. Sprouting angiogenesis and induced susceptive angiogenesis both occur in utero and in adults. Sprouting angiogenesis is better understood having been discovered nearly 200 years ago, while induced susceptive angiogenesis was discovered by Bury about two decades ago. As implied by its name, sprouting angiogenesis is characterized by sprouts composed of endothelial cells, which usually grow toward an angiogenic stimulus such as VEGFA. Sprouting angiogenesis can add blood vessels to portions of tissues previously devoid of blood vessels. The basic steps of sprouting angiogenesis include enzymatic degradation of capillary basement membrane, endothelial cell, EC, proliferation, directed migration of ECs, tubulogenesis, vessel fusion, vessel pruning, and parasite stabilization. Sprouting angiogenesis is initiated in poorly perfused tissues when oxygen sensing mechanisms detect a level of hypoxia that demands the formation of new blood vessels to satisfy the metabolic requirements of parenchymal cells. On the other hand, induced susceptive angiogenesis involves formation of blood vessels by a splitting process in which elements of interstitial tissues invade existing vessels, forming transvascular tissue pillars that expand. Induced susceptive angiogenesis is also called splitting angiogenesis, which is fast and efficient compared with sprouting angiogenesis because, initially, it only requires reorganization of existing endothelial cells and does not rely on immediate endothelial proliferation or migration. Angiogenesis is regulated by a balance between activator and inhibitor molecules. However, upregulation of the activity of angiogenic factors is itself not sufficient for angiogenesis of the neoplasm. Negative regulators or inhibitors of vessel growth need to also be down-regulated. A number of molecules are involved in these complex angiogenic cascades. Their names and functions are described briefly in the next section and are listed in Table 1. These factors are commonly used as the targets and strategies to manipulate angiogenesis. Although a vast variety of growth factors and cytokines act as inducers of angiogenesis, vascular endothelial growth factor, VEGF, is the most specific growth factor for vascular endothelium. VEGF receptors or type 3 receptor tyrosine kinases, VEG for 1 and VEG for 2 are expressed primarily on endothelial cells. Gene targeting studies show that both VEG for 1 and VEG for 2 are essential for the development of the embryonic vasculature in mice. VEG for 2 is considered the most potent mitogenic receptor in neuropylonades in the binding of VEGF, thus increasing its mitogenic capability. VEGF and their receptors have been the most wanted target for angiogenic slash anti-angiogenic therapy in angiogenesis dependent pathological conditions. Thrombosbondin, TSP. A 450K to matricellular protein was the first anti-angiogenic factor discovered in the 1990s. TSP prevented VEGF-induced angiogenesis by directly binding to it and by interfering with its binding to cell surface heparin sulfates. Pigment epithelium-derived growth factor, PEF, is a secreted glycoprotein with molecular weight of 50 K to. It is a member of the serpent superfamily of serine protease inhibitors and is the most recently discovered anti-angiogenesis factor. PEDF can promote neuronal cell survival but acts as a potent inhibitor of angiogenesis. The pathological disruption of angiogenesis can be caused by either vascular insufficiency, myocardial or critical limb ischemia, or vascular overgrowth, hemangiomas, tumors, and retinopathies, Table 2. Thus, therapeutic benefits may be realized by manipulating angiogenesis. Therapeutic angiogenic drugs that accelerate the angiogenesis process are useful for treating diseases of deficient angiogenesis. 
Therapeutic angiogenesis provides a valuable tool for treating cardiovascular diseases by stimulating the growth of new blood vessels from pre-existing vessels. Various angiogenic agents are in clinical trials for treating ischemic heart disease. However, one growth factor may not be sufficient by itself, but may require additional growth promoting cytokines. VEGF and PLGF have been shown to stimulate angiogenesis and collateral growth with comparable efficiency in the ischemic heart and limb. This and other studies show that additional mechanisms including the recruitment of myeloid progenitors and hematopoietic precursors are also required in addition to angiogenic agents to stimulate the growth of new vessels in the ischemic tissue. The formation of new blood vessels provides a route for oxygen and nutrient delivery, as well as a conduit for components of the inflammatory response during the healing of wounds. Proangiogenic treatments have shown remarkable promise in the healing of wounds in pathological conditions. Kirchner et al. reported that topical use of VEGF had 50% improvement in time for wound healing in diabetic mice. Galeano et al. also suggested VEGF gene transfer might be a new approach to treat wound healing disorders associated with diabetes. It is encouraging that recombinant platelet-derived growth factor BB, RHPDGF BB, has been approved to treat diabetic neuropathic foot ulcers. Recently stem cell-derived vascular cells or endothelial progenitor cells. EPCs, have attracted significant attention because of their capability for, revascularization called vasculogenesis. Vasculogenesis resembles the embryological process where the hematopoietic slash endothelial progenitors, hemangioblasts differentiate into blood cells as well as blood vessels. The therapeutic potential of stem cells can be further enhanced by combining with gene therapy. In this approach, stem cells can be genetically modified prior to transplantation in such a way that particular cellular processes are strategically exploited. Gene delivery can be used to overexpress desired therapeutic factors to induce biological response. In contrast to growth factor delivery, gene delivery may also be utilized to upregulate expression of intracellular transcription factors or cell surface receptors. These strategies offer the advantage of controlling cell behavior at the intracellular signaling level. Many studies have provided considerable insights into the molecular and cellular biology of angiogenesis and the discovery and evaluation of potential anti-angiogenic compounds. They were identified using classical angiogenesis assays such as the chick chorioallantoic membrane CAM, rabbit cornea assay, sponge implant models, and matrigal plugs. Hemangiomas occur in 1 out of 100 neonates and in 1 out of 5 premature infants. About 10% of them may have serious tissue damage that includes interfering with a vital organ, obstructive airway, heart failure, or kossebach merritt syndrome. Interferon alpha-2A, IFN alpha-2A, is an angiogenic agent that could be useful for treating these hemangiomas. It was also found that therapy with IFN alpha-2A accelerated the tumor regression in 18 of 20 hemangioma patients. IFN alpha-2A suppresses the production of FGFs in human tumor cells, which could work for hemangiomas because BFGF is an angiogenic factor that is overexpressed in hemangiomas. Inhibiting VEGF is presently an anti-angiogenic therapy that is approved for ophthalmic conditions. Two currently approved anti-angiogenic therapies for ophthalmic diseases are an anti-VEGF aptamer, pegaptinib, macogen, and a fab fragment of a monoclonal antibody directed against VEGF. Ranibizumab, Lucentis. A photodynamic therapy called Visudine, QLT therapeutics slash Cibavision, has shown effectiveness for treating macular degeneration and was the first FDA-approved blood vessel therapy for eye disease in 2004. Clinical trials of angiogenic inhibitors have not been performed yet in patients with arthritis, however, minocycline and TNP-470, also known as AGM-470 have shown efficacy as potent inhibitors of the vascular panis in experimental arthritis. Angiogenesis plays a critical role in the growth and spread of cancer because a blood supply is necessary for tumor growth and metastases. Many natural or synthetic angiogenesis inhibitors, also called anti-angiogenic agents, have been studied to prevent or slow the growth of cancer. Bevacizumab, Avastin, is a monoclonal antibody that specifically recognizes and binds to VEGF which prevents VEGF from activating VEGFR. The other FDA-approved anti-angiogenic drugs are serafinib, Nexavar, for hepatocellular carcinoma and kidney cancer, sunitinib, Sutent, for kidney cancer and neuroendocrine tumors, pazopinib, Votriant, for kidney cancer and neuroendocrine tumors, and Everolimus, Affinitor, for kidney cancer.
Researchers are exploring the use of angiogenesis inhibitors in some clinical trials. In summary, angiogenesis-based treatments can provide a novel, selective, safe, and rational treatment for future medicine.